Mate, think back to the year 2016. What were you up to? Well, in 2016, Witness 10 hadn't been out long. Sadly lost the likes of George Michael that year, Carrie Fisher, Alan Rickman, amongst a few other legends. And it was, of course, the year that that guy won that election. Feels like yesterday, doesn't it, mate? Doesn't time fly? Well, mate, if you take the amount of time that's happened since then and then add it onto now, you're at 2028. Because all that was six years ago. And in 2028, Autodesk are going to stick a bat up your nightdress if you're not prepared, mate. So be prepared. What I'm talking about is Autodesk's move to subscription to having ended all perpetual licenses, which, by the way, mate, people are still super pissed about. So pissed that there was all kinds of talk at the time of threats of class action lawsuits, people lawyering up and going legal. The fury was tangible and incandescent. It was all over the forums, people raging about it. Now, originally, this video was going to be a pros and cons of the perpetual model versus subscription idea. I was going to talk about that, but as much as I genuinely couldn't really give a flying f***ing high wind about offending anyone, let alone the vocal minority who clearly feel and care so deeply about their CAD software that they're genuinely prepared to spend a fortune on lawyers to make sure that they don't have to spend money on CAD software. It's it's baffling, but it's also very intricate, subjective, multifaceted, and, and sensitive. And there's more to it than that. It's not that black and white. I, I get it, right? The, and I, there's no way I can cover a topic like that in its totality without it all descending into carnage anyway. So I've been that idea, but I kind of stumbled across this one in the meantime. So to understand the big 2028 ticking time bomb that I'm referring to, we need a bit of a history lesson. So for Autodesk's entire 30 odd years up until 2016, they sold what they called perpetual licenses. For example, in 2013, mate, if you wanted AutoCAD, you needed to pay upfront lump sum payment to Autodesk of around $4,000 to secure that license of AutoCAD, which at the time for simplicity's sake, let's say that would have gotten you a perpetual license of AutoCAD 2013. Now legally, you never owned that license. A lot of people thought that they did. But the end user license agreement had it so that what you actually paid for is to be granted the licensed rights to use AutoCAD 2013 for as long as you want, or at least that's what everyone was led to believe. That's what they referred to as a perpetual license. You don't have to pay another cent to Autodesk from that point on if you don't want to, but that was never good enough for Autodesk. So what they then said was, hey, if you give us another $600 on top of that four grand lump sum, then next year, what we'll do is we'll update your AutoCAD 2013 license to AutoCAD 2014 when that comes out. And if you keep paying us $600 per year, we'll then give you AutoCAD 2015 and then 2016 and so on. We'll also give you technical support and some other benefits in what they call an annual maintenance plan but if you stop paying for that annual maintenance plans say in 2015 for example your perpetual license would then just end on the year that you stop paying for example 2015 but you could then carry on using AutoCAD 2015 without having to spend another cent with Autodesk but you'd be stuck on AutoCAD 2015 pretty much indefinitely and myself having first-hand experience in the Autodesk partner channel my experience is that the majority overwhelmingly of corporate customers did in fact take that maintenance option but then predictably and expectedly in 2015 Autodesk officially announced that from 2016 they'd be ending the sale of all new perpetual licenses completely. The majority of the licenses would be sold from then on as monthly or annual subscriptions. Similar to how you pay monthly for the likes of Netflix, mate. You'll get access to your CAD software whilst you're paying for it. But the moment you stop paying for it, no more CAD for you, sir. From here on in, Autodesk wanted everyone off the perpetuals and on a subscription. Now it's easy enough to stop selling new perpetuals to new customers. What about all the millions of maintenance plans that are out in the wild, that all their existing customer base are on, that they spent years up selling companies onto. Well, someone at Autodesk came up with a plan. A plan so cunning that you could put a tail on it and call it a weasel. Their plan was to make every single existing maintenance plan out in the wild so ridiculous that it was just no longer feasible for anyone to stay on them by artificially inflating the price of all future annual renewals each year by up to a total of 35%. So much so that it, they just didn't make any sense anymore to stay on that old maintenance, making it worse as well each year to instill some urgency in people. But that's not all, because alongside that cunning weasel of a plan, Autodesk were conjuring up a plan so cunning that it out the professor of cunning at Harvard University, and henceforth, they dropped the M2 S or move to subscription promotion. This is where Autodesk customers, in the face of unavoidable 35% price hikes and inevitable punishment for delaying and staying on the old maintenance plans, but also in a kind of, what the fucking choices everyone got here kind of a way, all perpetual customers could trade in those perpetual maintenance licenses and convert them to the new subscription licenses. And this is exactly where Autodesk set the timer going to 2028. Because aside from a few incremental 5% inflationary increases over time up to 2028, the move to subscription scheme promised to honor the annual maintenance price a customer had been paying so far for maintenance indeed until 2028, locking in their 
maintenance pricing for near enough 10 years late, which was basically unheard of. Autodesk offered all customers the choice, but not really a choice, to pay for their subscriptions at the cost of their old maintenance plans, which was no joke because the cost was miles apart. There's a lot of businesses, for example, only paying around £1,200 annually for a subscription to Product Design Collection, which MSRPs at over three grand for a new subscription to that because the old maintenance for what was product design suite ultimate was around £1,200 annually with around a seven to nine grand lump sum payment for the perpetual might I add. And fun fact, many are only paying around 600 quid annually as well for the same license after the two for one trade in on network licenses. But that's a different story for a different video. Mate. Get subscribed if you want to hear about that one. But what's this ticking time bomb all about then in 2028? Well, if you haven't already kind of clocked on to what's going on here, let me explain. Let's say you've got Bob's Engineering Services, typical company out there and Bob has 100 product design suite ultimates on Perpetual and he switched them to subscription in 2017. Autodesk would have came to Bob and presented the M2S scheme and converted those licenses to £1,200 per year subscriptions. Now at the time, Bob and his team wouldn't have gave a shit. They didn't ask for any of this. They weren't given much of a choice. It was just something happening at the time. When the solution was, look oh, Bob, we're just, we're just gonna sort it out for you. You don't have to pay anything extra. It's not gonna cost you any more for another 10 odd years. You don't have to worry about over 10 years. Bob's just gonna quickly put that out of his mind and crack on with what he's in business to do, which is engineering services and all the pressing issues he's kind of got on at the time. There's no brain space for pondering over this stuff when it doesn't impact him there and then. His reseller sorts it out, he just cracks on. But what if it wasn't Bob who negotiated that deal? What if it was his CAD manager or an IT manager? That's a very common thing in large businesses. And over 10 years, people move around a lot. They retire, they change positions, or they completely forget what happened and what was said 10 years ago, or it all gets muddied over time. It was 10 years ago. What I think should be obvious that I'm kind of trying to say here is that in 2028, a full 10 years on, what's the chances that whoever is potentially in that position of license renewals at Bob's Engineering Services is gonna have any idea that all this is gonna go down in 2028 and all these price locks are gonna expire. So basically in 2028, Bob's Engineering Services is facing the reality of 100 subscriptions converting from 1,200 pounds per year, plus around about 15% of the inflationary price rises, onto the MSRP of whatever product design collection is in six years time in 2028. And mate, currently, that's 3,294 pounds in the UK. So on today's rates, Bob would be looking at his annual spend changing from 120,000 a year to 329,000. So about that, what do you think is going to happen? What are Autodesk going to do about it? Well, I don't speak on Autodesk's behalf and I can only speculate and that's all this is at this point. But you can surely bet your bollocks with barn dance, mate, that there'll be categorically no further discounts or promotions. There'll be no cushioning, coming off M2S schemes or anything like that. Autodesk did give everyone 10 odd years to prepare for this. And everyone, whether you agree with this or not, in Bob's case, for example, he's had 10 years of running three grand a year subscriptions, 1,200 pounds per year. That lump sum he paid back in 2012 for the original perpetual in the first place, doesn't really factor in I'm not no I'm not gonna go there that's not for this video but uh, right obviously Autodesk will be acutely aware as well of how impactful this will be for a significant chunk of their customer base who will hit the roof at the time in 2028 and cry potential bankruptcy and you know auto theft and corporate greed and but the thing is at the end of the day what this all comes down to is those customers about now having to pay what everyone else has been having to pay this whole time they're all going on MSRP so sympathy and empathy might be a bit hard to come by when it's revealed how little they've been paying for the previous 10 years compared to new customers that Autodesk might have gained in the subsequent time however Autodesk Desk might come up with incentives, I don't know, technology enhancements, pseudo promotions that seem like they are but not really to kind of lessen the blow, but I, I don't know. After 10 years, I think the arguable good times are going to be over. Autodesk will want to draw a line in the sand and close the chapter on the legacy of perpetuals and maintenance in 2028, in my opinion. That's the time that'll happen. Be prepared. But I have a message for Autodesk. Your competitors weren't born yesterday, mate. They'll be prepared as well. Regardless of the fact that all these businesses are basically facing the prospect of having to pay MSRP just like everyone else. Not factoring in reseller discounts, of course, but your competition. They're gonna know in 2028, you're gonna have a significant amount of unrest in your customer base. And you can hop, skip, the jump down to the bank with this, mate, that they're gonna be lining up all kinds of aggressive promotions themselves, ready to capitalize on that. So Autodesk, you be prepared. So my advice for everyone on this, on the current move to subscription model, is to just, I mean, there's not a lot you can do here. I very much doubt Autodesk themselves have a plan at this point. Just look at your license count, look at today's pricing and be prepared for your annual spend to increase to at least this in 2028. Of course, this is gonna hurt even more for the customers who took the two for one on network licenses. But all I can say at this point is put a note in your diary for 2028. And if you do leave your current employment between now and then on good terms at least, do what you can to pass on the message. And as a side note, this isn't to any way 
diminish the value of the reseller channel who have no doubt themselves will obviously do what they can at the time to warn their customers well in advance that this is all going down. But mate, having worked in the reseller channel, they are going to be absolutely overwhelmed by this. Both trying to keep up with what's going on, mixed messages, sponging up the fury from angry customers. I just hope Autodesk give them the support they need to handle this properly and communicate everything effectively. Anyway, that's all I've got for this one. Thank you very much for watching. If you do want to support this channel, best way to do that is by visiting my website under the like button using my referral link before subscribing to an Autodesk product that helps me in the best way possible. And then also subscribe to me if you're not already. That's a good way. I'm a simple human. That's all I need. Thanks again, and I'll see you in 2028. Toodles.